Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing I suppose a little bit of a brand mini like overview review type thing. So I have a bunch of Eliza Vecca products here. If you're not familiar with Eliza Vecca they are a Korean brand and they make skincare products and they look fun. Um, they have really cute packaging. Everything's a little bit like, I don't know, playful. Um, but what's good about this stuff is while it might look a little bit, you know, maybe childlike, um, it's actually quite effective skincare and it's relatively affordable. But I'm just going to go through the things that I've tried. Um, I've never had like uh, just like straight up Eliza Vecca skincare routine. Um, it's never been a brand that I've like just concentrated on to see what it's all like. It's always been stuff that I've sort of dotted through my collection throughout the years. Um, and some of it I have been using for years. So I'm just going to go through what I've tried, what I've got here. Um, some items I've tried in the past and I did pick up so I would have them to do this video and I'm going to let you know what I think. I'm going to start with masks um, and I'm going to start with I suppose what would be maybe their cult product. This was the first product that uh, came into my collection from Eliza Vecca many, many, many years ago. Uh, and I suppose it was what put Eliza Vecca on the map for me. I don't know about that statement for other people, but it is the Carbonated Bubble Clay Mask. So this is from the Milky Piggy range and they have different ranges like they've got the Hellpaw range, the Milky Piggy range, uh, Aqua Deep range um, and they all are targeted to do different things like hydrating and uh, treating problematic skin stuff like that. So the bubble clay mask comes in a tub like this very cute packaging can we just address the little pig on the mask he is fucking cute this is something that I love about Eliza Vecca products. They're just cute, but they're effective. Um, so when you open the mask, this is what you are faced with. It does come with a little scoop. A lot of Korean skincare products come with one of these. Uh, you open it up. Eh. Come on, nails. So here's what the mask looks like inside. This is kind of like it's got sort of a jelly texture right so you're gonna scoop some out and you're gonna put this on a clean face um, I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand because I'm doing a makeup wear test and that's probably going to screw up the makeup wear test uh, and you just you know massage it on nice thin layer or thick if you want I don't know do whatever you like I've done thin and thick layers and essentially what this does is it bubbles up over time. So this mask is supposed to work like any other clay mask. It's supposed to help control oil production. It's supposed to help clear out pores over time, tighten pores, all that stuff that you expect from a clay mask, you are supposed to be able to get from this mask. And when it's used on a fairly regular basis, it's actually quite good. The difference with this mask and other clay masks is the fact that it, it's actually like that jelly texture and it foams up on the face. So I don't know how, there we go, we can get quite close. So you can see it bubbles up, like it foams up on its own. I will say with this mask, the removal is a little bit tedious. I wouldn't just go to the sink and start rinsing off a full face of this mask. I would take a tissue and wipe off the excess or a sponge or a cloth, and then I would do the water rinse because this stuff will foam up more, it'll like soap up like a you know a face wash a foaming face wash it'll foam up more when it comes in contact with water and it's going to take a long time to rinse it off so my advice 
If you're interested in trying a like jelly type clay mask instead of a traditional clay mask, when it comes to removal, get off as much excess as you can and then rinse off the what's left with water. You'll have a much nicer time. The next masks I wanna talk about are the sheet masks. So these are from the Power Ringer range. I've got two from the range. I have the Red Ginseng, this is an anti-aging one, and I have the Aqua Deep. Now the Aqua Deep is my favorite. This is a hydrating mask. This is a really beautiful sheet mask. Um, they do come in other forms. They have like a, one for problematic skin, collagen, brightening, soothing, all sorts of sheet masks. It's like any brand that makes sheet masks, they have something that targets every issue that you possibly have. Um, now, what I love about these sheet masks is the texture of the mask. They are super thin and they are super soft. So they conform to the face really nicely. Um, you're not gonna find any like stiff sheet masks that sort of stick out and won't like adhere to the face. Not in this range. These are really nice little sheet masks. If you're curious about any of them in the range, I would totally like, I would recommend. They're really lovely. The last masks that I have from Eliza Vecca are these guys. They're the Hydrogel Bouncy Eye Patches. Now these come in a pack of 20, so you get 10 pairs. Inside the box you'll find this guy. He is a resealable pouch. Ugh, get it open. And this is actually how the eye masks come. Now these are not what I expected them to be. They are interesting. So you have an eye mask that looks like this. On one side you've got material and on the other side you have a plastic. Now you peel off the plastic, you pop it under your eye and you just let it sit there. These masks, they can be worn overnight. Now I have never managed to do that because they feel, okay I'm gonna say this, they feel a bit intrusive. These stick like nobody's business. These patches are not going to slide off your face. They will stay there until you physically remove them. Uh, so you can wear them overnight if you can handle the feeling of them. Now I find, I've tried to go to bed with them on, but I just find that I can't get past the feeling of them and I have to take them off. Something else that's interesting about these particular eye patches is they are not wet. These have a sticky hydrogel side which adheres to the face and that side is supposed to like seep something into your eyes. They're meant to be hydrating patches. They are meant to be good for fine lines. Maybe if you can wear these overnight, you might see results. I am unable to do that. I have considered just wearing them for a whole day to see if that makes a difference, but I haven't gotten around to it. And they're just, they're kind of, they just, you can, you can feel them. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that I personally can't really deal with it. What I do like to do with these though is take like a hydrating serum, hyaluronic acid or a vitamin B um, and put the liquid heavily under my eyes and then put these over the top because they stick like nobody's business. They won't slide around, they won't move, they are on there. So they do have a purpose and to be fair, I would, okay, I feel like I'm not giving these a glowing review, but I feel like I would buy these again because I, like I said, I feel like they have a purpose. Where my under eyes are really dry or upset, I can go in with something soothing or super hydrating. I can put on heaps of it, put these over it and then peel them off like an hour later and my eyes do feel a lot better. So they have a place, I just haven't been able to use them as they're intended by like wearing them overnight. So there's that. Take that as you will. Let's get into skincare products. The first two I wanna talk about are hyaluronic acids. Now these are 
pretty much the only serum type products that I have tried from Eliza Becker. So I have the Hyaluronic Acid 100%. So this is just hyaluronic acid. That's it. One ingredient hyaluronic acid and it's a huge bottle of it. I think it was 100 ml? 150 ml. Alright, it's 150 ml of hyaluronic acid and it's not super expensive either. This retails for like 25 US dollars so it's gonna last you a long time. I, okay, let me talk about this one first. I really tried to love this product and it, you only use a tiny bit as you like go through it. This will last you forever. I just found that this wasn't enough for me. It just didn't, it didn't touch the sides when it came to helping my skin when it was dry basically. So I think if you have pretty normal skin but you still like to use a hyaluronic acid to help hydrate the skin, this one would be nice. But the one that I really am like dead set in love with, this is beautiful. This is the Hell Pore Hyaluronic Acid 97%. Now this does have more ingredients in it, but the first two ingredients are hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. So they've got the hyaluronic acid and the vitamin B that help to basically boost each other. They're both really good hydrating products. So this has a sort of like, let me see if I can show you. So it's a loose gel liquid type consistency. This one is similar, but it's a bit thinner than this. The Hellpore is gorgeous. I use this morning and night and I have been using it for months. I'm only halfway through the bottle. I'm talking mm, probably four months I've been using this. So this is going to last a long time. The amazing thing about this formula, look, it's not that amazing, but one of the really awesome things about this formula is it goes so far because it's that sort of slippy gel. Like one drop is enough to do a full face. I tend to use two and take it all down like my face and my neck. I love that one, it's fantastic. And it doesn't like, doesn't dry too sticky um, and it makes your skin feel hydrated instantly. Whereas this guy, I feel like, it doesn't make you sticky or anything like that, but I feel like my skin feels really dry after using this. So it's just not enough for me. I much prefer the Hellpore over this guy and yeah, this is, this is where my love lies. Next, I have two moisturizing products. I've got something that I use during the day. I've got something that I use at night. The day moisturizer that I enjoy is the Aqua Hyaluronic Acid Water Drop Cream. So I really like the packaging of this. It's very cute. Uh, so this is a, mm, it's sort of a white cream, but it's kind of like a transparent sort of, white it's or translucent white and you can see it's like okay so <laughs> if you are not familiar with what a water drop cream is um essentially what you've got is a gel cream and when you like work it into the skin it becomes like a water it feels like water uh, it's super, super light. If you have oily skin and you really like gel moisturizers because they still make you feel moisturized and hydrated, but they don't sort of encourage more or feel like they encourage more oil production throughout the day, this is the sort of thing that you would love. It's fantastic. It's so light, but it actually feels like it gets in there nice and deep and makes the skin feel really comfortable. Um, my only issue with this is the scent. It smells like powdery flowers. It smells like Nana. It smells like a Nana. Um, I don't really like that. I think Personally, I would have loved it so much more if it had like a 
zesty, fruity, fresh scent or no scent. Um, but I really like that one. It's nice for during the day. There is some silicones in this one, I believe. Yeah, there's a few silicones in there. There's obviously hyaluronic acid. There is niacinamide. So it's, it is, it's got the ingredients to help hydrate and moisturize and keep you comfortable and all that stuff. Um, but because it has silicones in it, I prefer to only use it during the day. And then I just don't, like I don't use a primer. I just use that as my final step and then go in with my foundation. So I really like that one. It doesn't feel greasy on the skin either. It just feels hydrated, which is really lovely. Um, the last cream that I have is this guy. This is the um, Retinol EGF Elastic Cream. So this is a night cream that contains EGF and retinol and it's an elastic formula. So if you're not familiar with what an elastic formula is, I will show you. So you have a cream and when you put the cream on your skin and you pull your hand away, you get those strands. So that's what an elastic cream is. It's, look, it's different. It's strange. It, some people hate them. Some people love them. I don't mind them. I actually think they're a nice formula. So because this product has retinol in it, I started using it as like my dedicated night cream uh, to replace a retinol serum. And I, I just felt like over time, uh, the results that I had got from another retinol product seemed to be diminishing while I was just using this. So I brought in my original retinol and I was using this at the same time and I had pretty intense retinol uglies. I was very peely and it was, it was a thing. Um, but my skin came out the other end and it looked absolutely beautiful. And I used this product along with my other retinol exclusively for about two and a half months. And I loved it. I was very happy. Um, now I, when I was sort of going through that process, um, I decided it would be a really good idea to find out how much retinol is actually in this. 2,500 IUG. So it's like 2,500 something units per gram. It actually works out to a 0.07% uh, retinol. So it's a very low retinol. Here's what we know about retinol. Uh, it's one ingredient that works. Now, if you're using it at a low dosage, you're going to have uh, less irritation. Probably your skin won't peel, um, but it's going to take longer to see the results. If you use it at a higher um, percentage, then it's the opposite. More irritation, more peeling, quicker results. Now, there is a point where a retinol, like the percentage of it can be so low that it's essentially just an antioxidant. Uh, it's not actually doing things to, you know, uh, help the skin to improve. It's just sort of like, uh, it's basically like a band-aid to prevent further damage. Now, I don't want the band-aid. I want the results. I'm in it for the long haul. I want to see the results. Now, I don't know if this is too low to be um, effective over time. All I know is when I stopped using my normal retinol serum and I was just using this, I saw that my skin was going a bit backwards and I didn't like that. When I paired this with my retinol, it was lovely. I was so happy with it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I would not use this on its own again. At the moment, I'm not using this uh, every single night. I have actually started a new retinol that is a little bit stronger. And on the off nights when I'm not using that retinol, I will use this just as a tiny little, like a little bit of retinol uh, when I'm not using a stronger one since my skin is currently going through, you know, 
the adjustment period. So this does have a place in my life. Um, I think if I'm using like a 0.5% retinol, um, I'm totally down to use this as a cream alongside it in the evening. Um, but if I'm using something stronger, I don't feel like I need this. It's just a little bit of a sort of booster product in between, you know, nights when I'm not using the stronger retinol. The cream itself is quite nice. It's a good little hydrator. Um, it does feel sticky on the skin once it sets. So if you can't handle that, you're probably not going to like that. I know some people really hate the sticky thing on the skin. I have been one of those people as well. Now, I don't know, over time, I guess I've just got used to it in the evening. I don't mind if my night cream is a little bit sticky, but yeah i really like this one it has a place in my collection i just don't think it's uh strong enough on its own to uh really see good results basically the last products i have are hair and body products i'm going to start with the hair products um these are the Ser 100 hair products from eliza vecca so you've got or i have two of the range i think there might even be maybe a third product in this range. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but I got one for in the shower and one as a leave-in. So the in-shower product is the Collagen Ceramide Coating Protein Treatment. So these are collagen ceramides and most importantly, protein for the hair. Now, I don't mind a good protein treatment for the hair because um, for many, many years, I bleached my hair to within an inch of its life and I am still dealing with the damage, even though the majority of it has grown out. Um, so every now and then I like to use a protein treatment to ensure that my hair has a little bit of a protein boost, but uh, this is not the type of product that you would use it, like it's not a deep conditioning product if you have really dry hair and you use deep conditioning treatments in your hair every time you wash your hair i've been through that phase uh you cannot do that with this don't just don't do that this is like a maybe uh once it depends how often you wash your hair maybe once a fortnight type product. I quite like it. I don't think it's the best protein treatment I've ever used, but in terms of affordable protein treatments, uh, a little bit goes a long way type of protein treatments. I do like this one. Uh, but if I had to put my money anywhere, it would actually be this guy. So this is the leave-in product. This is the collagen coating, wait, collagen coating protein ion injection try and say that three times quickly so this is uh, a leave-in hair product uh, you can see it there again it's got that gel formula so it comes out as a gel but it's got a lot of movement when you rub it between your fingers it becomes really really light and it smells it smells like oh, it's got a bit of a perfumey scent. It's like a floral perfume, but it's not like the old Nana sort of musky scent. It's fresh, it's floral, it's vibrant. I really like the scent. What I love about that particular product is that it really helps to smooth the ends of the hair. So my ends, like from about here down, they're pretty, they're, they're a bit crispy and, um, I fight the good fight every day to resist having them cut off, um, probably because I'm like many other people who have had a bad experience at a hairdresser where you go in and you're like, just take off an inch and then you leave and you're like two and a half inches to three inches shorter than you wanted to be. Um, I respect that, you know, fucked up hair shouldn't stay on someone's head because it doesn't help promote hair growth uh it's just gonna snap and you know look like shit but it's still not a nice feeling when you have more cut off than you're expecting so i am one of those people i tend to sort of just let my hair go until it gets to a point where i'm like okay no this is really bad and i gotta go in for that trim uh but 
in the meantime when I'm letting my hair sort of do its thing I do look for products that help to smooth the hair make it feel smoother not tangle as much give it some shine this is not a product that is going to repair your hair over time it's if your hair is damaged your hair is damaged this is a band-aid for the hair essentially but i do like it because it's light it doesn't weigh it down it smooths it quite nicely there's not many hair products that i can really sing their praises because they are like the be all end all and this is not one of those products but it's not a shit product i do like it it has a place and if I'm going to choose one over the other, I'm going to choose this one. But, spoiler alert, I think they actually work best together. In shower, this after. My last two products are body products. And uh, one of them is a holy moly product. Uh, I was not expecting what this product would do to me when I put it on my skin. Uh, it is this, guy. It's the Shrink Lifting Pro. And I'm gonna try and show you guys if we can get it to focus. So you can see there's a little pig in an egg and he's got a flag and it says eight degrees. And um, I didn't really notice that. And like, yeah, I didn't pay attention. I was just like, that's just Eliza Vecca's little piggy and he's cute and yay. Um, so I didn't pay attention to that and it wasn't until after I'd used this product that I went oh the warning signs were there so essentially what this product is is uh, a tightening product it's supposed to be good for um, like helping to minimize cellulite when it's used over a long period of time um, but it's a body moisturizer and I put this on Mm, I did the whole thing. I did the legs, the torso, I did the boobies, and I did the arms. I, I was so cold. So cold. You know when you put on, like, a if you use a, an in-shower, like a body wash or a moisturizer that has, like, peppermint oil in it or something like that, and you get that cooling effect, that's, like this on steroids it's just i've never experienced such an intense cooling sensation in my life um it was insane so again you can see it's sort of like a gel type moisturizer um let's pop it on here it's very light when you like work it into the skin it dissolves into a really thin almost watery type product instantly oh my god i can smell the menthol so menthol hyaluronic acid there is mandarin orange fruit extract uh what else have we got peppermint oil sage oil wintergreen leaf oil coffee seed extract okay that that says a lot um my god you, you know when you are when you've got a cold and you're all blocked up so you get out the Vicks Vapor Rub or you get like the butter menthols or something like that and once your sinuses start to open up you've got this really cold sort of clear fresh feeling that's what this does you could use this like Vicks Vapor Rub seriously you could put some of this on the back of your hand and it will fucking clear you right up but when your whole body is covered in this it is intense it is tingly my boobs have never felt so cold in their life this would be nice in summer when you're just sweating like a pig and you can't escape the heat um but don't use it in winter look if you like that feeling go for it i actually quite like it I like the scent I think it smells fresh the formula is very nice it's thin it's not sticky it'll absorb really quickly and you're gonna get an intense cooling sensation personally it's not something that I like all over my body I don't mind it in the shower with a body wash but a moisturizer it's not really my thing um, 
but if we put that aside, I didn't think it was a bad product. It felt like it was working. The last product I have is the Green Tea Salt Body Scrub. So this is a salt scrub for in the shower. Um, okay, so this is my first issue with this product. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got some. Uh, it's really, really difficult to squeeze through this little cap here. Uh, when I'm in the shower, I don't fuck with that. I actually, I unscrew the cap. Um, so this is, it's kind of like a, it looks a bit like a balm with um, sea, uh, sea salt bits in it. And that's kind of how it feels when it goes on the skin. Now, it's very scrubby. But I'm dropping bits on me. I think my issue with this is um, when this scrub is used in a small area like this, you can see there's like a good amount of scrubby bits. Look at that. It's good. It's a good amount. It's, you know, a nice dense scrub for the body but when you are taking it and doing that in like large large sections of the body like the legs the torso the arms um it's just not it's not enough salt scrub so uh i find that i use quite a bit of it to get the type of scrub that i like which is a very dense scrub um but mm, yeah it's I feel like I'm, I'm using a lot and I kind of I run through it quickly. I feel like it's a bit of a waste. What I do like about this scrub is that it is not a foaming scrub. It's actually, I would consider this a hydrating scrub. So when you get this wet, um, it will, you know, rinse away, bleh, rinse away the salt. It will rinse away the excess sort of balmy product and it leaves a, a bit... I'm going to say a layer on the skin, but it's not an offensive layer. Um, it can feel a little bit slick when you're in the shower, but when you get out and towel dry yourself, there's no signs of like oiliness, greasiness, stickiness, heaviness, nothing. Your skin just feels nice. So I would say this isn't my favorite scrub because the packaging is a little bit annoying to use. It would have been much easier if it was in a tub, um, but then if you've got a tub in the shower and you're dipping your wet hands into it, it's you get water in it, it's kind of annoying. That's a thing as well. So I can, like, I can look past the problematic, like, packaging. I just screw the lid off and squeeze it out of there. It is much easier. Um, I probably wouldn't purchase it again. I'd be more inclined to try a different body scrub to see if I could find another favorite that maybe I love, uh, that has lots of scrubby bits, gives me a really good body scrub. Um, but I don't hate it. I don't think it's bad and I do enjoy it. Um, I, I feel like it's kind of hard to be like, I like it, but I wouldn't buy it again. Um, but it's just, this doesn't tick all of the boxes. It ticks some boxes and the way it makes my skin feel after getting out of the shower is really lovely. But I feel like uh, life is short and I'm still happy to go on the hunt for like the ultimate body scrub, essentially, that ticks all of the boxes. Um, but I don't mind this one. It's, it's quite nice. I think um, it's really going to come down to your preferences of what you like from a body scrub. If you don't need a body scrub or if you don't want a body scrub that is like almost like rubbing fine grain sandpaper on your skin, which is what I look for, uh, maybe you would absolutely adore this because I do think it's nice. It's just not what I look for. So there you have it, guys. That is a little overview, mini reviews of all of the Eliza Vecca products that I have tried. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have tried any of these Eliza Vecca products, if you like them, if you don't like them, or if you've tried others that you really love or loathe. 
let me know. If you're wondering where I get my Eliza Vecca products, I get mine all on Yes Style, but I'm sure there are other retailers. Like I know you can buy this brand readily in Korea. I'm pretty sure I saw it in Japan when we went as well. So yeah, you if you are not in Australia, do some like googling if you're curious i'm sure you'll find a retailer that you know or i don't know maybe a brick and mortar store sells them i don't know i don't know i only live in australia i only know what i know that's it i'm gonna go give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one bye